The Bundoran Weekly is brought to you by AIB, supporting local businesses in Bundoran. For more, see AIB.ie. Hi everyone, it's Shane Smith, Bundoran Tourism Officer. It is Friday the 10th of February 2023 and I'm here with you for the Bundoran Weekly Podcast, episode 219. It is the podcast that talks about everything Bundoran. We are on Valentine's weekend and uh, looking forward to seeing plenty of people around Bundoran. We had a good uh, bank holiday weekend as well and uh, lots of people around. So uh, let's continue it this weekend. Uh, discoverbundoran.com forward slash Valentine's is where you'll get all the information on things that are happening and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on. Also going to be joined by the Donegal Four, and that uh, is Martin McDevitt, Sarah O'Malley Daly, Martin um, McGee, and Anne Morrow. And they are four ice swimmers from this area who use the Thropony Pool here in Bundoran regularly. And uh, in the last couple of weeks, they competed in the World Ice Swimming Championships in France. Yeah. It sounds as crazy as it is, uh, so uh, we'll be chatting to them a little bit later on about uh, what they've been doing and why they're doing it, why they're doing it, I suppose, really is the biggest question, but uh, we'll be talking to them a little bit later on on the podcast. And also, of course, Teresa will be with us from Bundoran Community Centre uh, in our community corner. Let us start with their entertainment guide, as usual. We'll start in the Allingham, dancing there tonight with Eamon Jackson and uh, Elaine Boyle is in the Coolmore Bar, Sinead McLaughlin in the Coolmore Bar tomorrow night and Jimmy Buckley and his band live in the ballroom tomorrow night. Trevor Lockery in the Coolmore Bar then on Sunday. Also on Sunday afternoon in the Allingham from 2 o'clock, it's an afternoon show with the Tumbling Paddies. So a great afternoon of music for a Sunday afternoon. Tumbling Paddies at the Allingham from 2 o'clock. Music in the Bird's Nest with Brendan German tomorrow night. And then on Sunday evening, it is Brian Kerrigan. Zara Montgomery tonight in the Chase and Bull and the Mark Black Band uh, tomorrow night there in the Bull. Retro Disco tonight at George's Bar and Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock, the usual trad session there. D Sweeney tonight at the Phoenix Tavern tomorrow night. It is the Davy K Project and JPK there this coming Sunday night. Paul Simpson, you'll see him live in the Railway Bar on Station Road there tomorrow, Saturday night. Music, of course, Paris is open and uh, also um, you can check out our website discoverbundoran.com forward slash events for all of the up-to-date entertainment listings uh, for this weekend, for next weekend and as we go on into the uh, the coming weeks and the coming months and uh, we'll be letting you know about those uh, as the time comes. If you'd prefer to go to the cinema well, you can go and see Magic Mike's Last, last Dance. Uh, Epic Tales is one for the kids and it's the 25th anniversary, believe it or not, of the release of Titanic. And to celebrate that, they are screening it again. Uh, it's a new 3D version, I believe. And it is screening uh, this weekend in the Eclipse Cinemas in Bundoran here. And then Missed It Monday is Babylon. So if you didn't get a chance to see Babylon, uh, it's all about the uh, about Hollywood. And that is the Missed It Monday, the, this coming Monday at Eclipse Cinemas. You can find the full schedule on our website, discoverbundoran.com forward slash cinema or indeed at at EclipseCinemas.com What else have we got to tell you about? Well, of course, the Bundoran 10 comes up in three weeks' time. It has crept around fast. There is still time to register, but the registrations are filling up. Bundoran10.com is the website. And here are some important dates for you. So if you want to have your race number and T-shirt posted to you, you will be guaranteed it by Sunday if you register before Sunday the 19th of February. All registrations after this will collect ahead of the run and the online registration is open until Thursday the 2nd of March. So Sunday the 19th of February, race numbers and t-shirts will be posted out to anybody who's registered before that date and anything after that you will collect it ahead of the run and uh, we'll be letting you know where you can do all that collection and stuff uh, ahead of time as well. So if you're registered right now, then uh, you're in. We can't wait to see you on the 3rd and 4th of March, 3rd for the 5k and the fourth for the 10 mile walk and the 10 mile run bundoran10.com if you are if you've got the training up and you're ready and you're pumped and you want to do it you've got three weeks to get in there but do register quickly and uh, make sure that you have your space sorted so bundoran10.com is the website there of course coming up then friday 17th of march 
3.30 p.m., mark it in your diary, mark it in your calendar, write it down, put a post-it note on the fridge, wherever you need to be reminded, it is the Bundoran St. Patrick's Day Parade. It is happening as usual at half past three on Friday the 17th of March. We'll be revealing details about it uh, over the coming weeks here on the podcast. But uh, just that is the big day. It's a three-day weekend as well. So we're looking forward to welcoming lots of people to town uh, for that. And uh, we'll be giving you details on our website and where all of the information will be available that you will need to know. But uh, I know there are some uh, plenty of offers available uh, on our website, discoverbundorn.com forward slash offers from our various trade partners for um, music and dancing weekends and all sorts of different offers as well for St. Patrick's Day. So do check those out if you want to be in Bundoran for St. Patrick's Day. Still to come, I'm going to be chatting to the Donegal Four. Namely, namely Martin McDevitt, Sarah O'Malley Daly, Martin McGee and Anne Morrow, the ice swimmers who use the Tropany Pool to train for ice swimming. Yeah, you heard me right. That is on the way and we'll be chatting with Teresa O'Neill in the Community Corner at Bundoran Community Centre. Stay with us on the Bundoran Weekly. The Bundoran Weekly. I'm Shane Smith, Bundoran Tourism Officer. It is the Bundoran Weekly Podcast, episode 219. Recently, four people from the locality took part in the World Ice Swimming Championships. They were held in Samoans in France. And the guys, they warmed up, they got back, and I caught up with them during the week and we had a chat about why they do ice swimming. Right, I'm here with the Donegal Four, um, namely Anne Morrow, Sarah O'Malley Daly, uh, Martin McGee and Martin McDevitt. And they are the four representatives who have been taking part in ice swimming and in in the international ice swimming championships in France, which we'll get to later. But Martin McDevitt, uh, welcome and thanks for being here to talk to us about this. But tell us what ice swimming is, first of all. Ice swimming is swimming in uh, water, uh, uh, water temperature of below five degrees. So uh, 4.9 or under. And the ice swimming uh, competition or the events, you wear you just your swim togs, so like a regular swimsuit and one hat and goggles. So uh, it's like there's no wetsuits or, or hats or gloves or booties or anything. So um, that's kind of what ice swimming actually is, is uh, swimming in water temperatures below 5 degrees. And you train out here in Bundoran at the at the Thropney Pool. Um, Obviously, it's a it's a suitable venue. This, the the water gets quite cold there. Um, yeah, well, it the, cold enough. <laughs> yeah, well, surprisingly, like the you know you do get um, temperatures cool enough that you are able to to train in. Uh, the Tropany Pool is a is a safe location, um, and we're blessed to have such um, fantastic uh, swimming locations uh, around here. Uh, we do come to Bundoran um, when we do want to get into a pool and, and train. Um, like we do swim in the sea as well, and, and then obviously in freshwater uh, with so many lakes around the area. Um, lakes are actually. Uh, colder in the winter time so the freshwater has been a good training location as well but um, we've been quite regular over Christmas and New Year period leading up to the event uh, to train in the pool and getting you know for distance and and obviously safety as well Uh, and yeah over the over the winter period you know we were having a few kind of weather spells there where it was cooler and and so on so we were you know kind of well prepared to be acclimatized for going to France. And how then did you get started in it, or who, uh, what was the, the the rationale behind? I'm going to go swimming in, in water that's really super cold. Martin, other Martin. Hi, Shane. Um, we are a group that were involved in various outdoor pursuits, uh, cycling, swimming, running, triathlons, so whatever. So we decided the swimming was our common goal. So we decided uh, in the summer we swim seven a.m. every morning, Rasnala, Creevy, Bundoran, somewhere, uh, and. Some wear wetsuits, some don't. The group of four here don't wear wetsuits at any stage, so we just decided we want to extend the season, so we kept it going and going and going. So when it gets too dark, we can't swim in the morning, so we switch to weekends then in the wintertime, and we try and meet up most weekends and go from there. And were you aware of ice swimming as a as a, as a sport, I guess you could call it? Yes, this last few years. Mm-hmm. Um, we started, if you're spending a lot of time swimming, you meet various people who are doing various different events, and some of them would actually say, have you heard about this? Have you heard about that? So we inquired about it, and it was what we were doing anyway. Mm-hmm. And we just, uh, with our winter season, we were swimming in our hat and goggles and, and togs and nothing else anyway. So we we had all the requirements for it, so we just kept it going. And we said, let's, let's enter it, give it a go. So, Sarah, there is a... A swimming body, an ice swimming body here in Ireland. 
There is, yeah. Uh, International Ice Women Association in Ireland. And I um, suppose we have been swimming with them, myself and Annie, 2015, was it? We started 2014. <coughs> we started swimming, travelling up to Armagh to swim in a pond. <laughs> and um, we actually uh, swam the first year in uh, Armagh, the International Ice Swimming, and it's gone on from there. What, what's the appeal of this? I won't say good for your mental health. <laughs> it's something we've just done. We've always swam. It's supposed challenge. To the challenge but we we swimming is what we do it's something we've done we've been probably doing ice swimming before we knew we were doing ice swimming as martin said we've been swimming for years martin and i 45 years we're swimming together uh, <laughs> swimming since we were two you know but we've, we've we've been swimming for years and we were we were doing ice swimming before we knew we were doing ice swimming so we just brought it to the next level as martin said and decided to start competing in it so there's a number of ice swimmers then in the county and then there's a lot of them from all over the country as well and obviously a lot of them from all over the world and is it has it been getting bigger and bigger oh it's definitely getting bigger and bigger and more appealing we were the four representatives from donegal there are other ice swimmers in donegal that mm -hmm. have swam in previous competitions but they didn't swim this time around but we were the four representatives from donegal in total there were 27 was it 20 31. 31 throughout Ireland who came together on the Irish team and travelled to France. And tell us a little bit about then going to, to France to, to compete. I'm sure you've competed in, in competitions before. Was this any well, different? or? <laughs> um, I haven't completed a world championship before, so that was a first for me and a few others, I think. Um, going to France, it was, yes, it was quite a challenge. Um, it, we th I thought about it long and hard. We were all supposed to go to Poland last year for this competition, but with COVID, mm -hmm. particularly with COVID, we didn't go. So we were adamant that we were going to take part in, in this one. Uh, so this year, it was a competition run over four days, very well run, in a lake 700 metres above sea level, wow. a lake in the Alps. Nice. And... Um, within the lake, then, they had a 25-metre pool marked out with pontoons, 10 lanes, and they had everything from 50-metre swims to 1,000-metre swims. Wow. So there was a number of different competitions. Then. Yes. The big one for everyone, or for a, for a lot of us, for the majority, I think, was the 1,000 metres, the 1K ice kilometre. And, um, in fact, I was in the very first... Uh, heat of the of the whole competition and there was lots of no ice. pressure then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no pressure yeah. is right particularly when as we, we were lined up on deck and they were breaking the ice in in the oh, water now for later heats that ice <laughs> had magically <laughs> magically dissipated <laughs> but um it it was it was tough going yeah so temperatures were Definitely under five degrees. Uh, it varied depending on who you spoke to. Right. Um, Would they go much under under five now? Or d does it have to be kind of for regulations? Does it have to be within a window or? Um, well, I think on that morning they said about three point eight, three point right. three point seven degrees or something like that. But you're, when you're in it, you don't. You don't. Uh, well, when you're in the heat of the competition, uh, <clears throat> you're not exactly hmm. counting points of degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is. It, it's fresh. tough fresh yes so a lot of people from all over the world there as well yeah? yes uh, maybe four or five hundred people competitors wow, from all over the incredible. world incredible yes everywhere from Argentina to uh, Mongolia. Uh, Mongolia Mongolia we yes South Mongolia Africa. Uh, South New Africa Zealand. New Zealand yeah, yeah American America yeah. they were from all over and then, for any one of you that wish to answer, then like, is it is it something then that you meet people from other countries and do you like become friends and then you make exchanges and, and all that kind of thing? Well, there's uh, there's an athletes village, the, the frozen village. Okay. So like um, at the event. at the um, at the event there's at the event there is uh, like the athletes village. What where, where they call it the frozen village. So there. Um, like every country has their kind of gathering area mm. and um, so that's where like the registration and the, the call room 
the first call room for the events are um, and then they like have screens and doors where you can watch the event as well when you're waiting so there you do like you're hanging around there with your teammates and you know obviously your supporter supporting each other but you get to know other people then and you're it's like a meet and greet area and um you're there all day like as Anne said the competition's over four days so you're 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 with um the competitors all the time mm -hmm. and you're getting to know people and then uh, like some of us are doing the same stroke, um, maybe different dis distances, but you would find then that in your heat, you're with maybe the same people. So you could have two or three events where you're actually swimming with um, the same swimmer. So uh, over the days you get to, you know, as because you're in the call room with them and you move to a second call room and then with recovery afterwards, um, after like the event. Olympics. So, uh, well, it is, it's a world championship. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So um yeah but you do um and you know you uh, like you you create a bond with other people mm. as well and you're supporting each other over over their events and the one thing that's different from the Olympics with us a lot of the, the interaction is in the rewarming the recovering after okay. because you go to a tent a heated tent first you stay there for a while till you warm up a little once your up body temperature's up a few degrees you go to a sauna and from there you move on to a hot tub so you could be you might be racing for 20 minutes in your one kilometre swim, but it could take you twice that to warm up. You could be 40 minutes with people. And in regards to your point earlier, do we meet lots of people? Yes, and we have an invitations to swim all over. If you're ever here, please yeah, come see us. They're ever there. And even in Ireland, from Ireland to New Zealand and everywhere in between, we have invitations from. Brilliant. And then, so when you're doing, when you are, are swimming, then, like, you know, if you're swimming in a pool or you're swimming in the sea here in Bedorn, like, you're obviously you're generating your own heat as you're as you're as you're swimming do, do, does it warm up or you know do you f just feel that cold all the time warm up as you're swimming yeah well when you're like you're exercising you'd normally warm up anyway but if, if you start warming up while you're swimming in five degrees below then that's a sign of hypothermia okay so that's something that we'd be very aware and mm. very alert how to recognize si signs of hypothermia while swimming and while out of the water but um does it warm up? <laughs> well, the mind is... Does it feel right, right, right. There are a couple of different ways of looking at it. Some people block it out to say it's not cold. Yeah. It's not freezing. It's fresh. It's chilly. It's fresh. And that's their way around it. Others then say, no, it is going to be freezing. It is going to be very cold, but they can deal with it. So whatever works for you. But uh, with the hypothermia and things, we're so used to each other, swimming with each other for so long, we know when each other... We know when somebody's affected. See the fans. And absolutely, it stops at that stage. Everybody out at that stage. So what, what, really, uh, what it means too is when we're swimming as a team, we trust each other as a team. So if we are swimming together and someone alerts the other swimmer that it's time for them to get out, you get out. You don't argue, you don't disagree. So we just trust in each other and we look after each other. Very good, very good. It sounds like it's, it's something that's not for everybody. <laughs> uh, probably not. Uh, uh, you know... Uh, People tend to either tell us that we're very brave, mm -hmm. which of course we are. Or something else. Or we're mad. <laughs> and neither, we you know, well, <laughs> which is very debatable. Um, some people just don't have the capacity for that. But like, I mean, uh, it takes all sorts. As regards the the cold water training for myself, you know it it there's a certain thrill to it, and there's a certain exhilaration afterwards. Um, whilst uh, acclimatizing to the cold water, you know I'm I'm talking about over over the years, it it took a while to get to a stage where I could fully tolerate it. You know, it used to be that my hands clawed in the water, and they, they don't claw now. Um, or I felt it at the back of my head, or I felt it in certain areas, my shoulders or whatever. But um, I, I've grown accustomed to that, so I presume we've, we've, we've grown accustomed to that. And it's, it's a, I suppose it's our way of... Um, Building a tolerance to the cold. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. yeah, and I suppose as well, like um, 
you know, lots of people are going into the water for recreational purposes, and they're going in for their their dips and their dunks and and that. Uh, whereas, kind of what the ice swimming is, it's it's like an extreme sport. Mm-hmm. So, and especially at competition level, there is. Um, you know, there's a lot of safety checks in that, and like, and as Sarah was saying, even when we're training, we have our, our kind of safety. Like, we have our, you know, maybe people on shore or people on the water with us, um, and then maybe you know people helping us as well with our recovery here when we're training. But for, for us to, you know, part of the criteria is that you know we have medicals, so we have in medical here in this country, um, and you have an ECG as well, and you know, you go through kind of a, a rigorous process on that when you get to the event as well as part of the registration process, you know, when you go and you collect your, your ID for the for the swims and then you're lined up waiting for a medical and, and so you have a medical when you're there as well. So like there's a lot of safety aspects in that. Um it's not that you just don't get up one morning and say, I'm gonna go swim a kilometer in yeah. five degrees of water. It's like that that has taken time you know that has taken years for us to to to, to get to this stage um but then to go to an actual event even for for us to simulate the event here in 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 Donegal before we left you know having those kind of checks in place and and the plan in place too if you know if something goes wrong or um or you know and the plan for the recovery and all too you know um yeah were you you able to simulate stuff before before you went we got uh some of the lakes around here at Christmas, on the day of the competition in France, it was 3.7, and we got a couple of training swims here at 3.9 degrees in lakes. Yeah. So it's very, very similar, yes. Very good. But you, you knew what you were, you were heading in for. Or were you, was there any kind of element of the, the competition that you were surprised at or kind of overwhelmed by maybe? Or? The buzz and the excitement and just, yeah, the crack and the, you know, the, um, and just being at that level, you know, like as Anne said, like, you know, well, Sarah has competed before the World Championship, um, but like for the rest of us, it was our first time. So, you, you know, we weren't like, ever been at an event of that level, and that kind of the adrenaline and the buzz, and you know, and just just the sheer enjoyment of it too, and realizing like, oh, I'm here, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. And the seriousness of it compared to when we train, you know, we have a fun element and enjoyment, but when you actually go, it is a proper competition as you said an olympic style competition it is an international event so you know you've got the fun you're meeting people the adrenaline but it's a very serious competition very very strict rules to be abided by and yeah over and then to yourselves then with the rest of the irish team do you have to qualify to take part or do you just enter or how does that work no you have to qualify okay. you, you can't just rock up and say you know i'm here I'm here. <laughs> Let's swim. No, you have to. You have to qualify. You have to be known to the International Ice Swimming Association or the Irish Board. Mm-hmm. So we were all known because we have competed uh, previous in our in um, in, Na- in within events. Ireland nas- in national events in Ireland. So we had done that in previous years. So we were known to that, known to the organisation, known to the board. So that's how you qualify. Very good. Are you? S- going again next year or how does that work it's on in two years time in okay. italy so we're going to just tip along nicely now this year and then come january next year we're full steam ahead for more for further training for our next training the chop the pool will have loads of investment in it then she <laughs> won't it for <laughs> <laughs> watch this face martin watch this face that's the next oh actually we'll make that the next channel getting the chop the pool upgraded <laughs> Listen, Anne and Sarah and Martin and Martin, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck for your future endeavours. Well done on your past endeavours and the competition. And thanks for being with us this week. Cheers. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. You. The Bondoran Weekly. Thanks for that, guys. And Sarah, of course, with her water safety hat on, reminded me to remind you, if you are going swimming, to follow the basic principles of water safety, not to swim alone, not to swim directly after eating. Always let somebody know where are you going and what time you're expected to be back. Carry a means of communications, all that sort of stuff. That great advice is available from iws.ie and also from rnli.org as well. And uh, just be careful if you're out and about doing some swimming uh, in the sea or even in the outdoor pools here in Bundoran. Let's move on now to the Bundoran Community Centre and air in our community corner is Teresa. Thanks Shane. We have creative poetry with Paddy Donoghue in the centre. They meet every second Monday at 7.30pm. Next meeting is Monday 13th of February. 
Art for Seniors is starting on Wednesday the 22nd. This course is part funded by ETB, so it is €25 Euro for the eight weeks. Limited space is available. If you would like to book in, call 071-98-29675 or email bundorncommunitycentre at gmail.com. We have hot desks here in our Cowork Plus. If you're working from home or you have low internet, check out info at coworkplusbundorn.ie. Our normal activities and services here in the centre are karate, seafront strollers, youth hangout, the knitting group, seniors alert, parent and toddler group, Irish dancing. For more information or to sign up to our newsletter, check out our website on www.bundorncommunitycentregmail.com or follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Thanks, Teresa. We'll talk to you again next week. It is the Bundoran Weekly with thanks to AIB, supporting local businesses in Bundoran and Ballyshannon. And that is where we will leave it for this week. I uh, hope that uh, you enjoyed listening to the podcast. Thanks, as always, for your feedback. Uh, we really appreciate it. Don't forget, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Bundoran Weekly. You can email podcast at bundoranweekly.com. And don't forget to follow us wherever you're listening now or indeed stream and download all episodes on demand at bundoranweekly.com. That is going to do it. We will talk to you again next Friday for episode 220. Have a great week. We'll talk to you and happy Valentine's Day. The Bundoran Weekly is a production of Discover Bundoran. The Bundoran Weekly is brought to you by AIB, supporting local businesses in Bundoran. For more, see AIB.ie.